Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. We got everything you want, honey. We know the names. We're the people that can find whatever you may need. If you got the money, honey, we got your disease. That's what the lizard men tell every. Oh, okay. Well, all right. As soon as this is over and I'm getting sued by Guns and Roses, you all think of me when I'm in prison. Now, anyway, welcome to the jungle, <laughs> where we got the lizard men. <laughs> How'd you like my like William Shatner-esque reading of that, by the way? Only I could be so lame to potentially make that as cringe-worthy as I did. Um, so, yes, welcome to the jungle. <laughs> and I indeed have a fun game. That's probably not copyrighted. So, um, myself, uh, I'm going to be playing as the last defenders over here, and I do have Krokgar leading them. And then uh, Reptile King's going to join me, and he's rocking the lizard men, led by Lord Mazdamundi. And then on this side of the battlefield, we got Halo and Wicked repping the evil Skaven of Clan Rictus and Clan Pestilence. Let's check out their army. Oof. Got a Plague Priest right here with the, uh, I don't know if there's a Bell or a Furnace. I always forget the names. I think it's a Furnace, but I'm terrible with all the names of the Skaven stuff. We got another Plague Priest here for Clan Rictus. Let me just try and get a look at the uh, the Skaven leadership for this army. We got a Warlord back here. And he's on the uh, Rat Ogre Bonebreaker. And then we've got the Grey Seer. Lore, uh, Plague Lore there. I don't know if it's actually Lore. Is it magic? I guess it's magic. It, yeah, it should be. Unless it's just all warp stone induced. A uh, ton of clan rats for the Skaven over here. There's also a warp lightning cannon on uh, several spots here. We've got two from clan Rick or three from clan Rictus. And then we've got some uh, Skaven slave slingers for clan Pestilens on top of the relatively light infantry that's up through here. There's some death globe bombardiers also in the back to give a little bit of missile damage and then the Skaven have laid a a uh, a little trap ambush here so lots of death runners here for clan Rictus a lot of death runners that's gonna be a lot of fast moving armor piercing and then clan pestilence has two hell pit abominations uh, deployed over on this flank these guys vanguard no they're not that just picked them up right over there so that's an interesting deployment spot and then a warlock engineer does have his warp stone armor Deploying with them, and there's some rat ogres here as well. Uh, my army, I've got a lot of skinks. I only have two Saurus warriors, but I've got four chameleon skinks, four skink cohorts, two cohorts with javelins, three bastilodons. So relatively light infantry overall, but supported by the bastilodons to give a bit of punching power. And I brought the bastilodons as they should be in most engagements, ideal against the Skaven because they are high armor and anti infantry, and the Skaven do not have great answers to a lot of large units like this, and I can see that Reptile King was thinking the same thing. Um, he's got some Saurus warriors in his army, though, so a lot of potent hitting power against the Skaven. And then Lord Mazdamundi riding aside astride Zlock here, and he is hungry for some filthy rats today. Uh, there's going to be some Pterodon riders also from uh, Reptile King. Let's fire it up. See how the match goes. I had intended to use this water because of the aquatic trait for the skinks. <laughs> Someone uh, accused me of picking a biased map here. Maybe. I, I mean, I wouldn't do that kind of thing. Not me. Yeah, okay, I did. I picked the water map because I wanted the skinks to like finally get to use their aquatic trait. <laughs> they get to move at full speed in the water, which is actually pretty cool. But it does make it hard for the Skaven here. So the Skaven will be playing a pretty difficult position there, but they've used this little uh, engagement to potentially get a good ambush off on me. Here comes the Rat Ogres and the Hell Pit Abominations. They're going to lay a flank flank attack here, and I didn't even see it to the last second because everything was quite well hidden. So as soon as I did see it, though, I'm going to bring a couple of units I didn't introduce. I've got a Skink Chief and a Skink Priest Lore of Beast. The Skink Priest is rocking Curse of Honor Air and uh, Doom Flock. Curse of Honor Air... Not so much because of the accuracy debuffs, but because of the um, the attack debuffs that I wanted to use with it. The Skink Chief, just because it's a great skirmisher from up in the air. Krokgar um, is in a fight over here that ought to be decent for him. He's got some support from Distilladons and from infantry. And he should be able to get over here and do a lot of anti-large damage up against these Hell Pit Abominations. He could potentially get beat up pretty bad, but I think he's in a fairly safe position because of all the support nearby. You see the Curse of Honor Air nerfing the Skaven pretty badly. Let's go take a look at what Reptile King is up to. He's about to engage the Skaven infantry, where he's going to hold numerous advantages, one of which is the monsters that the Skaven are going to struggle to stop. 
the Saros warriors are going to outclass all the Skaven infantry pretty significantly. And then Mazda Mundi also on a dinosaur here. This is going to create difficulty for the Skaven to stop. There's some Cold One Spear Riders here, undoubtedly to help protect um, Mazda Mundi in case he ended up in a situation, probably with Hell Pit Abominations or something like that. The Skaven don't have a ton of options to block a unit like, um, like Mazda Mundi. Yeah, Pterodon Riders doing their thing, so a very quick and vicious hit here on the left flank of our armies on the right flank of the Skaven, and um, Reptile King is punching through. Over here, the Skaven are going to make a desperate attempt on my skirmishers, and they're going to get to him, at least momentarily. I've got Krokgar and Hot Pursuit. Hot Pursuit? Oh, that sounds steamy. Valentine's Day's coming up. Boy, the lame jokes tonight, folks. Start you off with Guns and Roses, and then this. Anyway, you can see Krokgar doing quite well here. My chameleon skinks are loving life. They're loving the aquatic life. Look at them. Little skinks. So at home in the water. Oh, that hell pit abomination, though. You can imagine that the water has been quite desecrated with its very presence. Over here, I've attacked with some of my infantry and Bastillodons. Reptile King had great pressure on the Skaven, so I wanted to put additional pressure on this flank. The Bastillodon punches through pretty easily. It's a great unit for this kind of thing. Saurus Warriors should do good. The Skinks are even doing pretty dang good over here, too. Most of the Skaven infantry was relatively light, so it leaves us in a good position. Let's see what Master Mundy's up to over here. He's got himself 39 kills. Definitely still lots of potential left for him. He's going to help go after the uh, Rat Ogre Warlord here. Back here, this fight's swinging in my favor. My Chameleon Skinks are going to help me mop that up. Let's see what we got coming here. Ooh, a Banishment? Is there a lot of Skaven Infantry over here? Couldn't tell. I mean, yeah, there was actually a pretty fair bit right up around that Scar Veteran. Oh yeah, there sure was. Picked up 60 kills there. And then that Ruination of Cities picks up some more. So Mazda Mundi getting some work done there. Not a surprise. That guy is an infantry nightmare. You get him around infantry, and even if it's not entirely blobbed, he can really be a nightmare for infantry. And then on Zlock, he does a lot of damage to it as well. So Krokgar cleaned up his fight over here. And then my Chameleon Skinks are just toying with these Death Runners who are unable to catch them. Normally, Death Runner is going to be a quick unit, uh, capable of running stuff down, but the water and the poison is going to make it very difficult for them to get any kind of advantage on my Skinks. My Skink Priest and Chief are going to fly on looking for another fight. They've been handy so far. I've used a couple of Doom Flocks and I think Curse of Honor Air a couple times. So I've been able to nerf enemy attack and do a little bit of direct damage. The rat things getting beat up by lizards here. And then the Bastillodons have pushed on through into the forest, and Mazda Mundi is back here, continuing to try and take down the rat ogre. Let's check him out. Man, graphics on this game are beautiful. Absolutely love it. Mazda Mundi, though, is trying to get away from that rat ogre. He's doing a lot of damage. And he's really meant for more of an anti-infantry fight. He does have a Scar Veteran that's going to be able to punch out and come save him. So he'll be fine. These Skaven Slave Slingers are a bit of a nuisance, but I don't think they'll be able to quickly bring down Mazda Mundi. There comes the uh, Scar Veteran. Going to get some really good attack in there. Then over here we've got the um, rest of my infantry pushing on in. Clearing out the remaining Skaven. Krokgar is now ready to come on over to the fight on this uh, kind of island in the back. I have a Stilodon tearing through a bunch of Skaven. These clan rats getting showered by chameleon skinks. Really, the two Hell Pit abominations need to be dealt with. So that's why I'm going to bring Krokgar over. And then I've got my chameleon skinks back here as well to potentially help. Relatively low armor. Hell Pit abominations are big and a somewhat vulnerable target. The Chameleon Skinks. I find there's a lot of targets that the Chameleon Skinks are really quite effective against. They can slow down flyers extremely well. 
cavalry gets slowed down really bad. Even though they're not technically good against armor, they can still be quite useful. Look at Krokgar right up here in the thick of it. You see my Chameleon Skinks have now retargeted on the Hell Pit Abominations and we drop one of them. The other one gets a pretty good fight going here with Krokgar. What a disgusting creature. Well, I guess unless you're a Skaven, and then it's probably a sight for little beady eyes. Got my two uh, skink leaders here on their pterodon swooping down in. Take out some remaining skirmishers that were around. Warp lightning cannon. The Hell Pit Abomination gets finished by skirmishers. And that's going to be pretty much the end of the battle. You see as it went down, it spawned up a unit of Skaven slaves from its internals. Pretty disgusting, but they, uh, they insta-route. That's going to be the end of the Skaven for this match. Fun match. I love playing 2v2s with the uh, the folks from the Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, you need to go join. And uh, you can see all these guys here running the uh, XMT, which is a 2v2 kind of clan thing. I think they've started up. It's pretty awesome. They do some fun stuff, and they've even gone out and played well in tournaments. And I think it kind of started as a bit of a joke, obviously, because I think it stands for Extreme Meme Team. But uh, something that they've ended up having quite a bit of fun with, so... Fun to join in with them. I, I guess maybe they'll allow me to be an honorary meme team member here. I don't know if I'm extreme enough to be on the meme team, but it was fun. Wicked and Halo, thanks for the game. Um, I'll be jumping into Discord from time to time to play battles with y'all, so if you want to be involved, like I said, go in the description. Click that link to the Discord. Join us. There's a lot of us on there. It's a great place to go get started. Hop into the multiplayer community, or, I mean, honestly, just get tips on your campaigns. Come chat with awesome people. It's a great place to be. I love uh, being in the Discord. I try and pop in every day and uh, chat as much as I can. And I always appreciate the good folks in there making it fun. So anyway, I will see you all around soon with some more Warhammer 2 action. Air of Carthage, signing out.